futurism. Entering the future. It is difficult to appreciate just how far um, artificial intelligence has advanced and how far it is advancing. Um, because we have a double exponential at work. Uh, we have an exponential increase in hardware capability, um, and we have an exponential increase um, in software talent that is going into AI. Um, so whenever you have a double exponential, it's very difficult to predict. Uh, People's predictions are almost always going to be too conservative in terms of thinking it'll be further out than it is. People thought defeating Go was either never or 20 years away. That was the world's best Go player was defeated. Um, and now that same AlphaGo system can defeat the top 50 players simultaneously with 0% of chance of them winning. Yeah. And that's one year later. Um, so the degrees of freedom to which artificial intelligence is able to apply itself are really increasing. I think the, you know, the, part of the role of government is to make sure the public is uh, safe, like to take care of public safety issues. And I think, so I think the right move is to establish some government regulatory agency, which at first is just there to gain insight. So um, it's not about like shooting from the hip and just putting in rules before anyone knows anything. But you've got to set up the agency, it's got to gain insight. Once that insight is gained, then start applying rules and regulations. Um, we have that for the, you know, for aircraft, the food. Um, and I don't think anyone wants the FAA to go away or the FDA to go away or, you know, um, any of those regulatory agencies. Um, I think we just need to make sure people do not cut corners on AI safety. It's going to be a, it's going to be a real big deal. Um, and it's going to come on like a, like a tidal wave. I watched a recent interview with Elon Musk and his largest fear for future was AI. What are your thoughts on AI? and how it could affect the world. Um, you know, I have, I have pretty strong opinions on this. I, I'm really optimistic, right? I'm, I'm an optimistic person in general. I think you can build things and, and the world gets better. But um, with AI especially, I'm really optimistic. And I think that people who are naysayers and, and kind of try to drum up these doomsday scenarios are, um, I, I just, I don't understand it. I think it's, it's, it's really... Um, negative, and, and in some ways, I actually think it's it's pretty irresponsible because you know in the next five to ten years, AI is going to deliver so many improvements in the quality of our lives. Um, if you think about just safety and health and keeping people safe, um, you know AI is already helping us uh, uh, basically diagnose diseases better, uh, match up drugs with people depending on what they're sick, uh, so that way they can get treated better. So it's going to help a whole lot of people uh, get treated and get better health care than would have had access to it before. If you look at self-driving cars, uh, they're going to be safer than, than people driving cars. Um, you know, that's, that's only a matter of time. And one of the, the top causes of death for people um, is, is car accidents still. And, you know, if you could eliminate that with AI, that is going to be just a dramatic improvement in, in people's lives. So, you know, whenever I hear people saying, oh, you know, AI is going gonna, is gonna to hurt uh, people in, in, in the future, you know, I think, yeah, you know, technology can generally always be used for good and bad, and you need to be careful about how you, how you build it, you need to be careful about what you build and, and how it's going to be used, but people who are arguing for slowing down the process of, of building AI, um, I just find that um, really questionable, right? I, I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that, because if you're arguing against AI, then you're arguing against um, you know, safer cars that aren't going to have accidents. And you're arguing against um, being able to better diagnose people when they're sick. And I, mean, I just don't see how, how in good conscience a, a, a some people can do that. So, I mean, I'm just much more optimistic on this in, in general than, than probably uh, a, lo a lot of folks are. What's up? Speaking of uh, really important problems, um, AI. So you have been outspoken about AI. Um, could you talk about what you think the positive future for AI looks like and how we get there. Okay, I, I mean, I do want to emphasize that um, this is not really something that I, I advocate or, or this is not prescriptive. This is simply pre hopefully predictive. Um, 
Because people sometimes say, like, well, like, like this is something that I want to occur instead mm. of so this is something I think that probably is the best of the available alternatives. Um, the best of the available alternatives that I can come up with, and maybe somebody else can come up with a better approach uh, or, or better outcome, is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or a uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. I think that that's very dangerous. Um, it could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator of a country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any um, any incredibly powerful AI. Um, you just don't know who's who's going to control that. So it's not as I think that the risk is that the AI would develop a will of its own right off the bat. I think it's more it's, uh, the concern is that some, someone um, may use it in a way that is bad. Um, or, or, and even if they weren't going to use it in a way that's bad, but somebody could take it from them and use it in a way that's bad. That, that I think is quite a big danger. So I think we must have democratization of AI technology and make it widely available. Um, and that's you know the reason that obviously uh, uh, Yumi and the rest of the team uh, you know, created OpenAI um, was to help uh, with the democracy, help help spread out um, AI technology so it doesn't get concentrated in the hands of a few. Well, I think the the first bit of advice would be to really pay, pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is we need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that. Uh, researchers don't get carried away because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a, a danger to the public. Uh, so you, you, you and I had a uh, uh, short debate on artificial intelligence last night, and uh, I want to bring uh, that topic um, here too. Uh, I also uh, understand Philan, recently you said that uh, um, artificial intelligence advances is like um, summoning the demon. Uh, that generated a lot of uh, hot debate. Uh, by the chief scientist, Andrew Yin, you uh, recently said during an interview, uh, that worrying about the dark side of um, artificial intelligence is like worrying about overpopulation on Mars. How would you address that? He, he said it, it's, it's a distraction to the, the, the scientists being artificial intelligence. I, I, don't think, I think that's a uh, sort of radically inaccurate analogy. But, um, <laughs> I, know, I know a bit about Mars. Uh, so, the, the uh, the, the, the risks uh, with um, sort of digital superintelligence, and, and it's important to appreciate that it would be it wouldn't be just human level; it would be superhuman almost immediately. It would, it would just so far past humans to be way way beyond uh, anything we could really uh, imagine. I, I think the more appropriate analogy would be like uh, if you if, instead of saying nuclear research, with the potential for a very very dangerous weapon, you um, yeah, re releasing the energy uh, is easy. Um, containing that energy safely is very difficult, and so the, the right, I think the right emphasis for AI research is on AI safety. We should uh, put vastly more effort into AI safety than we should put into advancing AI in the first place, uh, because it, it may be good or it may be bad, and it, it could be catastrophically bad uh, if there could be the equivalent of uh, nuclear meltdown. So. You really want to emphasize safety. So I'm not saying I'm not against the advancement of AI. This is, I want to really be clear about this. But I, I do think uh, we should be extremely careful. And if that means it takes a bit longer to develop AI, then I think that's that's the right trail. Um, we shouldn't be rushing headlong into something that we don't understand. Uh, Bill, I know you share similar views with Elon, but is there any difference between you and him? I don't think so. Uh, okay. I mean, he actually. Uh, put some money out to help get some coin on this, and uh, I think that is absolutely fantastic. 
And if people in the audience want to read about this, I highly recommend this Boston book called Superintelligence. And, but the basic point that Elon just made that we have a general purpose learning algorithm that evolution has endowed us with. And it's running in an extremely slow computer. Uh, very limited memory size, uh, ability to send data to other computers. We have to use this funny mouth thing here. Uh, and but whenever, it's also we, whenever we build a new one that starts over, it, it doesn't know how to walk. It's a really um, long route process. Um, it, yeah. So believe me, as soon as this algorithm of uh, taking experience and turning it into knowledge, which is so amazing, and of course we have not done in, in software, as soon as you do that, it's not clear you'll even, even know when you're just at the human level. You'll be at this superhuman level almost as soon as that algorithm is implanted in silicon. And, you know, actually as time goes by, that silicon piece is getting ready to be implanted. The amount of knowledge, as soon as it has that learning algorithm, it just goes out on the internet and reads all the magazines and books and things like that. We have essentially been, been building the content base for the superintelligence. You think you're using the internet, that's actually what you're you're doing. So, uh, you know, I try not to get too exercised about this, but when people say it's not a problem, that really, then I can start to get really, uh, uh, in a point of disagreement, how can they not see what a, a, a huge challenge this is? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we all understand this will have huge impacts uh, by, uh, in the society in the future, and many companies include Microsoft and Baidu. We all invest heavily in artificial intelligence. I think, particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games, you know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot. You know, like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh yeah, like me too, exactly. That's I played old. <laughs> exactly, it sort of dates you a little bit. But yeah, we, we both played the same game. Um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously. And, um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality um, and augmented reality. And if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then it seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves? Yeah.